Hello and welcome to Life in Envelopes. I am Jennifer Bleacher. This channel is all about my journey from full-time teacher to full-time small business owner and my financial struggles along the way. So if that is something that you would like to watch, then please keep watching. I wanted to come to you today in person to just address a couple of things that have come up. First of all, I've gotten getting this question a lot recently and I'm answering each person individually and I thought, let me just put it out there. I thought that I had explained this, but I don't think I was really clear about it and maybe I was a little misleading. So I wanna clear the air. First of all, I'm not really retiring in May. It feels like a retirement and I've been calling it a retirement. And the reason why is because I was a teacher for 20 years and I'm no longer going to be a teacher and I'm going to be doing something completely different. So it sure does feel like I am retiring from teaching, but I'm not retiring like completely. I still have to work. I still have bills to pay. I still have debt to get paid off. So this is really not an early retirement of, as more of retiring from the job that I was kind of tied to that I had to do to survive, to switching over to a job that I'm choosing to do because I love it and I'm passionate about it and it brings me joy. So that's really what's going on here. So people have asked me, why are you retiring when you haven't paid off all your debt? The reason why, that was not the plan, by the way, that wasn't the plan. The plan was to, re to pay off all our debt and then to focus on investing so that we were taken care of for the rest of our lives. Along this journey, I started making stickers on Etsy and I love it. It brings me so much happiness, but it's over, but the amount of time it takes is a lot and it's too much for me to sustain for the long haul. So I had to make a decision. Let me just give you an example. One night this week, I got up um, before school started and I worked in my Etsy shop from 1 a.m. To 6 a.m. That's when I started getting ready for school. Uh, another night this week, I got up at 10.30 p.m. and I started and I worked. My idea was I'll just work for a couple hours and then go back to bed, but I ended up working until school again. I can't keep that up. It's very difficult for me to do that. So um, because, of, because I can't really sustain both, like really give my full 100% to both, I decided I needed to choose. I had to choose between my teaching career and this small business that I'm starting. It's not where I need it to be, but it's getting there and I chose that. Maybe that wasn't the best choice. Maybe that wasn't smart. If you'd like to see how it goes, then you should subscribe and keep following and see how this goes. But it's just what I decided to do. And I really hope that nobody like makes life decisions based on decisions that I've made. I have no idea if I made the right choice yet. We won't know for a few months until we really get into it, but um, that's it. That's the backstory. So that's why I've changed my intro. You notice my intro is different. Um, also, because I can't sustain this current workload, I, I've decided that I'm only gonna film YouTube videos on Saturdays now. Um, I'm gonna film as many as I can on Saturday, so I'll have, still have more than one coming out during the week. But whatever I don't get done on Saturday is not going to get filmed for that week. And this is just for the ne next eight weeks. Um, I believe it's either eight, eight or nine weeks until I'm done teaching full time. Just so I can really, you know, I can really focus on getting my Etsy orders filled and out on time, getting my designs done, um, and then dedicating enough time to my teaching job because it is very important to me and I don't want my kids to suffer in any way because I have this side hustle that's taking up so much time. So um, for the next eight to nine weeks, I'm only gonna film videos on, on for YouTube on Saturday and then all the rest of the week, I am focusing my time on Etsy and teaching. So if you notice that there's less videos coming out, that is why. So today's video is my weekly family budget check-in, and I'm very excited to do this with you guys today because this is the first check-in of our bare bones budget. Now, I've already um, written down all of the, the things that we paid for this week, and I've written down the totals, but I haven't calculated it out yet. So let's jump in and see how it all worked out. We're going to go over the expenses. I mean, we're gonna go over everything that I spent this week, we're gonna close out the first week budget and then we're gonna set up the second week budget. So if that is something that you would like to see, then please keep watching. 
Okay, so today for our weekly check-in, I am using the Budget by Paycheck Workbook by The Budget Mom. I do have a link to her um, website down below. I am also using a notebook from Plum Paper, and I, um, have, I have directions down below in the description box about how you can save 10% on your first order with Plum Paper. So if you're interested in that, just check that out. And what else? <laughs> I have some items that are listed in my Amazon shop. I have, these are the highlighters that I used to do the pre-work in, um, in my books here. They are retractable highlighters by Sharpie. I love them. And then um, I am using this erasable pen by Pilot. It's called Friction. It's also listed in my Amazon storefront. And then I have some stickers from my good friend, Kara Jo Plans. She has an Etsy shop. I have a link to her Etsy shop as well as a discount code for you guys. And then the stickers you see in this notebook are from my Etsy shop, Life in Envelopes. I have a link to that down below as well as a discount code for you guys. Okay, this is your Let's... first time joining me. Let me get you caught up to speed on what we are currently doing. So we are currently trying a bare bones budget and we're doing a check-in once a week. I used to check in um, by paycheck, which would have been twice a month, but now I'm doing it once a week to try to get better control over my finances. And the bare bones budget is to see if we can live with less income. Okay, so let's go to this first week in April. For my weekly check-in, I, I use these pages one page per week. I know the budget mom, she does all of her expenses and then like continues if she has to, and she challenges herself to just fit everything on one page, which I think is super fun. But for me, it's just easier to put all of my expenses for one week on one page. And then this here is the key of how much I spent in each budget category that week. And it's gonna come in handy when we move over to the notebook. So here are all of my, my expense, uh, um, income and expenses for the week. But let's just look at the monthly spread. I think it's just more fun for you guys to see me lay the expenses out on the spread than go over that list. So let's do that now. We're gonna start with bills. So, this actually, I forgot to include this in our bare bones budget, and it's crucial, we can't not have it. It is our auto insurance, and we have auto insurance through State Farm. It's $158 a month, and that is for two vehicles. Um, I have a vehicle and my son has a vehicle. He could probably, we could probably put it in his name now, but I'm afraid that he would have to pay a lot more for insurance, I'm not sure. But I'm, we're willing to help him out, continue to help him out. He's 18 now. I, th I, don't, I can't remember if I told you that. <laughs> so we did need to include that. Um, we, we, have a, we had a debt payment this week to our mortgage company of 1337. That came out on the second. Okay, let's take a look at food. This is always the one we've been struggling with and we've recently changed our goal from 150 a week to 100 a week. Now we were never able to stay in 150, so this is a major challenge. Let's see how we did. First of all, we um, had a, a trip to Aldi. We are now shopping there as an effort to lose weight and I'm, I'm not lose weight. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> to not spend as much on groceries. <laughs> Sorry, okay, so um, yeah, this is like, we, this replaced what we, we used to go to a store called Fairway and I had $100 to spend at Fairway and I could never keep it under 100. My goal at Aldi is to stay around 50, so again, I went over, but still way better than I was doing with Fairway. At Sam's Club, so those are the two main shops that we shop at, is Aldi and Sam's Club. So our thought was we will spend about $50 at Sam's Club and about 50 at Aldi. It's more like this week at least, we spent a little more at Aldi and a little less at Sam's. Okay, we had a couple other um, expenses food-wise. I did have to go to Fairway because Sam's and Aldi, neither one had sugar-free coffee creamer. And I don't know if they never carry it or maybe they carry it and they sold out, but I need my sugar-free coffee creamer. So I had to go to Fairway to pick that up, and that was $9. I, kinda, I think I got two or three, I kind of stocked up on them. And then um, I had my, I get, <laughs> I've explained this before, I get Subway once a week at school. They have a special deal for the teachers where they bring a Subway, it costs $6. I get a six inch of chips, a cookie, and pop. 
And then for, um, we had an unexpected food expense this week for school lunches. Our lunch account was empty. I am taking a, a lunch to school every day as a way to save money, but sometimes I am running behind schedule or something happens or I forget my lunch and then I have to eat the school lunch. So I do like to have a little bit of money in that account for those types of events. So I did put $25 into that account. Okay, for gas, we're trying a new strategy where every week I am filling up. I used to go every two weeks before filling up and it cost approximately $30 to $40, depending on where gas prices were. But um, to be more on track, I'm gonna be putting in $15 every week, and hopefully I never run out. <laughs> That's the goal, to never run out of gas. So every week I'm gonna put $15 into my gas tank. I put 15 in this past week, and so far it's working well. Okay, and then there were no miscellaneous expenses, which is great because part of our bare bones budget was to get rid of that miscellaneous category. So I don't have any money budgeted for miscellaneous. Medical, um, there were none this week. House, we, uh, we had a budget of $50 and we spent $50 at Sands Club. Our house expenses are like paper products, cleaning products, dog food, and coffee. We count coffee in there because that's an expense that almost everyone in our family. So me, David, and uh, Jacob, our 18 year old, he also drinks coffee. So we just count that as a house expense. I also did not take out any money for sinking funds and cash envelopes. And I wanna talk to you about that right now. Actually, let's look at that right now. We'll close out this week's budget and then we will talk about um, why I didn't pay those. So I haven't done the final calculations, but I did go in and put in the amount that we actually got because we had the budgeted amount last week and now I did the actual amount. So let's just add everything up. I do have some things to explain to you. So let's start with the rollover. We budgeted 700 and we spent 700, or we got 700. David's payday, we budgeted 1834 and we got 1842. I believe this has been a couple of months now where his check has been up to this and it's consistent, his, his check doesn't vary. So I think this is just his new pay that he's getting since the year changed to January or to 2021 in January. Okay, Etsy, this is kind of a big deal. I was really starting to freak out about only counting my Etsy income week to week and it just made me really uncomfortable. And I realized I had all of my Etsy income from last month. And so what I'm going to do is I am going to save up all of my Etsy income throughout the month. And then at the end of the month, I'm gonna have that be my pay for the following month. So I'm getting paid one month ahead. I hope that makes sense. That way I just have more control over what happens. I, I don't like not knowing week to week how much money I'm going to have. So now I know I have $979 to make that will needs to last me the whole month. And any money I bring in week to week uh, is going to be added up in, for the next month. Okay, so when I add all this together, let's see where we were. It's 35.21, and I'm just going to quickly double check my math. I need, I've learned I need to double check everything I do. 35.21. Okay, so coming down to bills, we budgeted $13.37 for our mortgage, and that's how much we had to pay. For State Farm, I completely forgot about this bill when I set up our bare bones budget, so I didn't put it down, but of course we still have to pay it, so it's $158 that I wasn't budgeting for. So let's see how much I paid for bills this paycheck. That's $14.95. So $35.21 minus 14.95, that's 20.26. So we're still ahead of what we budgeted, but a huge part of that is because, well, it is because I, I'm counting all of my Etsy income now at the beginning. Okay, so let's move down to the next category. So we have 20.26 to work with. Okay, so for food, we, we budgeted 100, we spent 127. Gas, we budgeted 15, we spent 15. Medical, we budgeted 50, we didn't spend any. House, we budgeted 50, and that's how much we spent. So let's see how much our total expenses were for these variable expenses. Okay, so we, we budgeted 215, we actually spent 192. So let's see what the, our leftover amount is. So we have 2026. We're gonna take away 192. Our new total is 1834. 
Okay, so I'm going to bring that up here to our sinking funds. And this is another change I want to explain to you. So when I set up the bare bones budget, I thought we will do sinking funds every week. Um, but because it is a bare bones budget and I don't know if we're going, going to, like if, if we have to cut from any area at this point, the only place we have flexibility is our sinking funds. So instead of doing it week to week, I'm going to do it on the very last week of the month after we see how we did through the month. Um, to make sure we actually have the money available to do our sinking funds. Hopefully we will, because having those sinking funds in place has been huge in, for our budget success. So hopefully we will, we will have enough to do them. But instead of doing it week to week, I'm doing it once a month at the end of the month. Okay, so, so we didn't spend anything on sinking funds, so we still have 1834, because that's zero there. So we have 1834 left. To bring this down here we do our extra debt snowball payment if we have any extra money for that at the end of the month as well so i'm coming down to extra savings which right now is just my rollover amount to, to next week and that's 1834. so our rollover is 1834 1834 to zero out this week's budget Okay, so let's go ahead and head over to next week and get that budget all set up. Okay, so we're for our income this week, we only have our rollover amount of, is it 1834? Of 1834. Okay, let's see. Um, I had forgotten to print out my Excel worksheet. This is where I do all of my like pre-budgeting work. So I went and printed that out really quickly and now I'm back. Of course, it was no time at all for you guys. But okay, so let's go here. So we have a rollover of 1834. Let's see what our expenses are going to be this week. So uh, bills are my fixed expenses. So my debts and my bills. We have Disney Plus, by the way, spoiler, decided to keep Disney Plus and Netflix, which was taken out of um, our... Um, our bare bones budget, those are two things that we took out, but after consulting with the family, those are two things I put back. <laughs> so Disney Plus, we are budgeting $8. And then we have a bill that goes to the city. This is for energy and water, or power and water. And we budget $300 a month for that. Okay, that's it for bills. Let's move on to our Variable expenses, we have food. These, it says envelopes. We used to have cash envelopes for these variable expenses, but we no longer do that because of the coronavirus. But I do track them in the notebook, which we we're gonna do at the end here. Okay, so food, we budgeted 100, or budgeting 100. Um, we currently aren't taking any spending money because of our, our debt, our um, bare bones budget. Gas, we're budgeting $15. We are not budgeting anything for unbudgeted expenses, for medical, we are gonna do 50. This is, this is not for debt. This is for co-payments and trips to the pharmacy for medication. That's what the medical expense is. And then house, we're gonna budget 50. So sinking funds, we're not doing any this, this week. So I'm gonna go ahead and cross that off. And we're not, so, we're not, also, we, blah. we are also not doing an extra debt payment this week because we're going to do that at the end of the month, but we are going to have some extra savings to roll over for next week's expenses. So um, let me put the, the date here. So this is for the week of April 4th through April 10th. So 4, 4 to 4, 10, and this is week two. Okay, so let's add everything up and see how it should go this week. So we're going to start with um, our total income is going to be 1834. Okay, so let's see what our, our, our bills will be 308. So 1834 minus 308, 1834 minus 308. 
That's 1526. I'm just going to double check my math. Fifteen twenty-six. Okay, so we bring that down here to the next category. So all of these um, cash envelope or variable expenses. Let's see how much that's going to be. One hundred plus fifteen plus fifty and fifty. So that's another hundred. So that's two fifteen. Okay, so I'm just going to double check my math. Okay. Now 1526 minus 215. That's 1311. Okay, so moving over here, we do, we're not doing sinking funds this week and we're not doing an extra debt snowball payment. So let's come down here to extra savings. This is the amount we're going to roll over to cover expenses next week. So we have 1311 budgeted. We're going to roll over 1311 for a total savings of 1311, bringing our total to zero, which is what we want to do. We want to zero out every week. We want a place for our money at the end of every week. Okay, so that is our budget for the upcoming week. Let's head over to the notebook and see how we did on those variable expenses. Here we are. So this is our first week. For food, we, well, let's see. Oh, I forgot to write down the budgeted amount. <laughs> Let me do that first. For food, um, okay. For food, we budgeted 100. For gas, we budgeted 15. Medical, 50. And house, 50. Okay. So for food, we ended up spending 127. But just, just to point out, if I didn't have that $25 that I had to put into our school um, lunch account, we really would have only been above budget by $7. But unfortunately, we are above budget by 27, so that's a negative amount. 15 for gas, we spent 15, so we ended with a difference of zero. For medical, we didn't spend anything, so we have a positive difference of 50. And then for house expenses, we spent all of it. We spent all $50, making the difference zero. Okay, so I'm just going to add all of this up. So we started with 215. See how much we actually spent. Okay, so we actually spent 192. So 215 minus 192, so we are still in the black. We are still positive. 215 minus 192, we should be positive $23. But I will double check my math here by um, adding this category up. Positive $23. Okay, good start to our bare bones budget. And I have to tell you, like, it didn't really feel painful. I think shopping at Aldi's has been huge. So yeah, so far we're doing well. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed today's video, will you please give it a thumbs up and I will see you all again next week. Bye everyone.